um, consider a request for reconsideration from Brattleboro Memorial Hospital. And I'm going to turn to the team from Brattleboro Memorial first so that they can um, do a presentation to us on why they believe their request uh, might be warranted. So um, Andre, Steve. Yeah. Well, first, let me lead off by um, uh, really sharing my appreciation for uh, the board uh, for this uh, uh, reconsideration. Um, I think um, it presents an opportunity to have some uh, good dialogue between us, the board, uh, and staff um, to really get a, a better sense as to um, how the board came up with their um, assessment on uh, MPR. Um, and in particular, um, you know, we worked really hard over uh, the last year through COVID um, uh, to um, reduce our expenses, to increase access uh, uh, to hospital services. And as you know, we had a horrendous first six months uh, here. We racked up losses of how much, Andre? Four? Yeah, almost four million. Almost four million dollars uh, the first six months. Uh, volumes were um, um, uh, nowhere near what we had budgeted. But what we did see is a significant um, increase in um, starting in March. And we worked with the all of our medical practices to make sure that there was um, uh, an increase in access for our patients. And I think what you've seen um, from March, um, and Andre is going to talk about this from March um, and through um, August, um, uh, a much better story uh, for uh, uh, BMH's uh, uh, volumes, which are reflected in um, uh, gross revenue increases as well as net patient uh, uh, revenue um, and FPP. Um, and I think for me the, and, and for our board, the question is, we have the experience of the last six months, or at least the last five months, we haven't closed out August, uh, but it showed a pretty dramatic increase from where we were prior year, thank goodness. And it was a lot of hard work by the staff here with reductions in expenses, um, as well as opening up access to uh, the practices. Um, and I think the question is, um, why not look at those six months or five months and project forward? Because we feel that um, uh, where we've worked through early on all of any pent up demand, and we feel fairly confident um, that we're going to continue to see uh, the gross revenues, the volumes um, uh, at the same level that we've seen over the last um, several months here at, uh, here at here at BMH. All that being said, um, um, we don't know what's going to come around the corner. I just got off a call with uh, Cheshire, our partner in, in Dartmouth, and they're having significant um, uh, uh, COVID-related um, inpatient admissions. Um, vaccination rate in New Hampshire is nowhere near where we are in Vermont, and it's putting substantial stress on the New Hampshire, uh, um, uh, state of New Hampshire. We're not seeing that necessarily here, but it does affect us because um, we can move patients uh, out of the ED that need that tertiary care as quickly as we can. But don't know if we're going to see that um, a bigger uh, rebound of COVID and hospitalizations that New Hampshire has seen. So if we see that, it changes obviously a lot of our um, uh, projections. Um, and I think, Kevin, you know that, the board knows that, we're in uncharted territory. This last year and a half has been uncharted territory. Um, so what, what, again, going back to my question is, what's the right number, what's the right projection? Um, and looking at what we've projected for um, the rest of the, the, the six months, the last six months of this fiscal year, and um, uh, what the coming year would uh, look like in kind of a normal uh, uh, state, which, you know, that's the big question, which no one really knows right now. Um, but I do appreciate at the end of the day the, the opportunity to share that with you and have this dialogue with you. Um, one of my requests is, um, uh, um, because, you know, hearing from uh, the board from the last discussion that you've had about BMH, 
Um, I don't think you're in a position necessarily to change your recommendation. It'd be great if you did. But on the other hand, to, to continue the dialogue, especially with our staff and your staff on the finance side, to monitor our um, our progress um, and our um, uh, NPR as we roll into the next fiscal year. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Andre. Uh, we did send you, or Andre sent you, and, and the staff um, uh, a document that you know covers kind of our position and how we assess our um, our uh, budget for the uh, coming year. I don't know. Uh, is Patrick on the line? He is. is he, I don't know if he can pull that up. Um, we don't have control of the screen. <clears throat> Give me one moment, please. Thank you. So um, while well, he's doing that, so that's my one question um, to the Green Mountain Care Board from our board is, is you know, what projections, the rationale for the projections, um, uh, the request, I have a request that uh, we continue to work with the staff of Green Mountain Care Board um, to really look at our methodology, your methodology, but also more importantly, monitoring our progress as we move into um, the, um, uh, the next fiscal year. Um, and then I just wanna close kind of our discussion with um, some general observations. Um, so Patrick, are you... Um, great. <clears throat> Yep, yep. Can you make it a little bit bigger, Patrick? For the, uh, my old eyes. You have young eyes. I have <laughs> old eyes. <laughs> so what this document is, is um, looking at March through July uh, actuals and just do a straight annualization. Um, these, these are numbers that um, have been submitted to, to Patrick and his team uh, through July. Uh, August isn't closed yet, so that's not, they don't have those numbers. But when you annualize the gross revenues, uh, it comes out to 205 million based on those five months, just under 206. Uh, and what we did was we, we put in a 4.6% fee increase uh, based on um, you know your last discussion as to reducing our requested fee increase to 5.1 to 4.6 to see what that would look like. So that brings the total gross to $215 million. Uh, the submitted budget with the 5.1 was 213. So just looking at that, um, you know, looking March through July from a volume slash gross revenue standpoint, um, it's been consistent. It's been back on track. Um, when you flow it down through to NPR, um, the, uh, the two columns on the right actually um, for net patient care revenue, uh, we use the same percentages that we budgeted which is very close to our annualized and March through July uh, overall NPR rate. Um, so you know, based on those months, uh, very different than the first five months of uh, FY21, um, you know, which when we initially submitted our budget had a projection, actually it was $4 million loss on projection. Right. So we were you know, a little over $2 million loss through February. Um, this. Uh, if this trend continues, which I don't see why it would not, um, that would actually put us right back in the wheelhouse of what we submitted for our budget. Patrick, can you pull up the um, the other one that I sent you for the gross revenues? Yes. Let me know if that's big enough, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little bit bigger if you can. Okay. So if you scroll to the right, so what this highlights is, you know, March through August, these are actual gross revenues. Um, you know, March is 17 and a half million, then it drops to just under 17 for April, May. Oops. Is that all right? Got it. Uh, you know, June bumps up over 17 million, right around 17 for July, a little over 17 for August. Uh, pretty consistent through those five, uh, six months. Uh, when you annualize that out, you're at 206 million. Uh, we were just under 206 on the through July 
uh, you know, so annualized with the rate increase is pretty close to the, the same run rate that we had with the May, uh, March through July numbers. So, you know, the, the, in your prior discussion, there was uh, a lot of discussion about our volumes, have they come back? Um, I think March through August signifies that they have come back. Um, these are probably actually a little bit higher than our 2019 actual numbers. Um, so I, I just put that going forward to say, looking at NPR, looking at volumes and gross revenues, um, I think this puts us way closer to what we budgeted than if you're looking at the first five months of our year. And this is a turnaround that we've seen. Uh, we don't see any reason at this point other than you know, the, the, the COVID um, issue that, that's out there, um, why this would change. Anything else you want to talk about? No, I think you covered it. Are there any, any questions on that? I, I think also, you know, we're well aware of the concern the board has expressed um, in the past about aspirational uh, volumes. Um, but what we're looking at here um, isn't really aspirational. It's historical perspective um, um, uh, for the last several months here and basing a budget on, on, on our actuals. Um, as opposed to, um, you know, volume that we think we might have. Um, I will say this, that, you know, part of some of our growth coming back is um, due to additional orthopedic um, uh, surgeons uh, joining us, um, continued growth on the uh, primary care practices and new clinicians. Um, so there are rationales um, that we can point to um, uh, that represent this growth in um, uh, in uh, gross as well as net uh, patient revenue. Patrick, before I turn it over to you for staff's thoughts, do you, Kate and Lori, have any questions of Steve and Andre? We don't have any questions. We we do have some thoughts around um, around this reconsideration though. Okay, why don't you go ahead and share those thoughts and uh, then I'll open it up for the, the board to ask questions of both uh, you and um, Stephen Andre, so. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, so thank you, uh, Stephen Andre, for coming in today. We share the, uh, the necessity to continue to monitor um, BMHs and every other hospital's finances throughout this year. It's probably going to be more important this year than it was last year in a vaccinated world that if there are challenges or opportunities that you are encountering that we communicate effectively uh, to help assist you in any way that we can. And while the staff still support the board's decision on the 22 budget, we do welcome the dialogue that if things have materially changed for you and you feel that that is no longer attainable, you are going to surpass it, that please open that line of communication to us and we'll do whatever we can to get you in front of the board to make your case for an increased uh, revenue growth ceiling. So I want to extend that to you today, that as we move into the next fiscal year, that is on the table from the staff to you and your staff. Um, as far as what's just been presented, um, so I've said the staff still support the board's decision. We recognize that Brattleboro has seen in the last several months um, some improvement uh, compared to prior year. But our issue with the annualization approach is that with the pandemic still writing its own history here, um, we live in an environment where instability is the rule, not the exception. And we've heard from hospital after hospital that we simply don't know. You've exercised that narrative today that we just don't know what's coming. Um, and because of that, the selective five month look that you've had has covered post pandemic world in summer month and the early months of summer in which you have probably recaptured a lot of that backlog. So I guess our issue with the annualization is annualizations assume a large amount of stability. And because that's not the case, we have a hard time getting our mind around that. The idea that you're going to have from those five months, a continued trend. Um, just doesn't meet the reasonability in this environment, even though that's difficult to make a uh, connection to it. 
that logic does not quite apply for the staff at this time um, because there are months that preceded that that as you've acknowledged were really off and so the selective five month look trending forward in an environment that continues to be unstable um, is not the logic that we would prescribe or subscribe to so that's where we sit right now in support of the board's decision but i think that goes back to how you began your discussion that it's going to be important to monitor this and it's going to be important that we communicate uh, so when we look at those individual months march was was definitely the outlier it was 1.6 million dollars in growth over february march also has three more days in which to generate revenue but then fell off 1.1 million dollars going into april and we've seen those net patient revenue numbers kind of slowly tick down going through July. Now, that is not to say that August and September cannot be a meaningful rebound for the hospital, but we can only work with the materials that we've been given. So uh, we respect the case you've made today. We still support the board's decision, Mr. Chair and board members, um, but we are more than happy to work with uh, uh, leadership at Rattleboro uh, if uh, the forecast that they had originally set forward begins to materialize going into the next fiscal year because we want to make sure we get the, uh, the right uh, net picture revenue growth for the hospital um, going through what continues to be just a challenging time for hospital leadership and their staff. Can, uh, Kevin, can I respond a little Certainly. bit? So, yep. Patrick, I really appreciate um, uh, uh, your comments. Um, I would love to see us after the first quarter um, come uh, between BMH and and your and the staff to present to um, the board kind of where we're at uh, from a standpoint of uh, net revenue. Um, because what I'd hate to have if all of this materializes and we do feel our, our numbers are correct that uh, hey you go in and and have to. Uh, dialogue about an amendment to our, our, our budget and, and the board surprised. So I think what I'd like to do is um, work with you and the staff and our, and our staff here um, and maybe target the, the fir after the first quarter results um, um, and have a dialogue also, you know, during the with the next couple of months uh, to see where we're at. Um, because I, I'd like to make this certainly, as you acknowledge, the collaborative um, approach uh, between the staff and BMH to monitor this and then uh, come together uh, to the board with um, a consensus as to uh, what what our budget uh, should look like moving forward. And it, I guess that's my request uh, as well to the board. Steve, we could have those uh, mid-year conversations and uh, as I've said previously, um, in many respects, uh, it would be a very good thing if your projections uh, were accurate, but just based on the past history of a number of hospitals in the state, we don't want uh, the aspirational budgets, and that's where the, the board was coming from when it made its decision. And I just, uh, again, just speaking as one board member, I could not see a punitive action being taken for you if these number numbers continue as they're currently going. So more than willing to to have you come back in after the first quarter, um, but I'd like to hear from the other board members on their thoughts. Sure, um, I'll go ahead and, and I appreciate you coming back in and, and putting the request forward. Um, actually, starting from this page, when you look at the commercial charge increase of $2 million, that was, that was your annual number you were expecting to get from rate uh, and not getting any for Medicaid and Medicare. Um, Patrick, if you can go back and put up the chart that we, that was showing the calculation from NPR, um, because you know if I were doing it in a in a kind of simplistic way, I would take your annualized number of ninety one three sixty nine and add that two million dollars to it, and that gets you ninety three three sixty nine. Um, you're you don't get rate on Medicare and Medicaid per your submission, so you wouldn't annualize the four point six percent across everything you would you would get about half of that um which would bring you to 93 93 400 so the number that that we had and even if you're doing it the way you are when you annualize the rate you you can't do that with all of your um deductions because if you have a, a rate of 100 and we raise it to 105 
and you used to take 50 off for Medicaid and get to 55, you'd now have to put 55 in there. So, so I, I don't think you're doing it consistently. Um, so again, looking at all the materials you've given before, you weren't expecting to get $4 million from a rate increase. So um, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't jive with me um, that with the rate increase, which you projected at 2 million per the chart we just looked at, that would get you to the 93, 369. So I, I, I still think you're at that number, uh, even with the trend line that you're showing um, March through July. Okay, other board members? Yeah, I, I can add my thoughts here. Um, and uh, you know, I do think that this nothing is is cast in stone here. And if the a hospital's projections uh, do unfold as as uh, they presented, then that's a good thing. Um, for me, you know, rather than being aspirationally generous um, in this situation, um, I, my tendency is to be a little bit of aspirationally conservative because um, I, I I look at the hospital's operating margins going back to 2019, and not in any one of those years has it has it been greater than one percent. Uh, even even uh, you know for the projection year for 2022, um, you know so there's a four five, four year trend there versus you know trying to kind of re redirect the direction of the ship, um, you know uh, based on uh, five months uh, worth of of revenues in a very volatile environment, and so you know if 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 if, if the history hadn't been there, I might feel different differently about it. But there is a, there is a an underlying trend here of of playing things uh, 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 close. And um, so my feeling is is that if these revenues do come in, uh, well, that will be the reality on the ground and uh, and and provide the basis to kind of maybe change change direction. But um, at this point in time, I don't think there's enough uh, of um, you know, information to 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 move away from the slightly conservative approach that uh, the staff has recommended and, and and the board has chosen. And, and you know, again, I I I would point to Maureen's analysis uh, in terms of of the uh, <clears throat> change in charge doesn't apply to Medicaid. Um, and I note that in your payer mix, your Medicaid projection is up 16 percent. Your Medicare is down one percent budget to budget, and uh, commercial was up three percent. So you're uh, kind of relying more on the on the weaker hand uh, in terms of 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 the budget to budget uh, payer mix. So uh, I, I feel comfortable where we are now, but I also feel uh, this is a good conversation to have and uh, could set the stage for another conversation down the road. Uh, based on the realities as they unfold. Other board members? Sure, I'm happy to chime in. Um, uh, thank you, Steve and Andre, for, for the explanation. Um, I liked your idea about having you and the staff get together and um, talk through where things are after the first quarter. I think that's a good way to move forward given all the uncertainty. Um, and um, so I, I think that's a great idea and uh, I'm supportive of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm in support of everything that my colleagues on the board have said. Um, so I think coming in at the end of the first quarter for a revisit to see how things are going makes sense. I think you're hearing from the board that we are taking a conservative approach, uh, particularly given the losses in prior years and historical margins. So ensuring sustainability of our hospitals. But again, I also agree with Kevin as to the point of one board member's opinion. If NPR is starting to exceed, you know, these uh, what the board has allowed, I don't think enforcement, at least in my mind, is on the table for me. Uh, so I think it's more about making sure that, you know, this hospital is uh, poised for success in terms of an operating margin, given the great uncertainty that we're in. So I think a revisit at the end of the first quarter makes a lot of sense. So I support that.
Any other comments from the board? Before I open it up for public comment, Steve or Andre, is there anything else you wish to say? Um, <laughs> I had on mute. Um, I really do appreciate the, uh, the board's flexibility in this matter, and totally, we, both Andre and I and the and the board here understands the uh, um, the concerns of the board, uh, your board, the Mountain Care Board. You know, on on the issue of, of margin, um, you know, I've been here 10, 11 years. Um, we've um, we've had some good years. We've had some challenging years. Um, I don't think. Um, to be very honest with you, that we're going to see a hospital uh, like Brattleboro to have a, um, uh, a significant margin, whether that's a three or five percent. Um, and the reasons are, you know, as, as I've shared with the board throughout the years, is we're financially the most challenged hospital in the state. We're not a critical access hospital, so we don't have the benefit of reimbursement from uh, Medicare for um, cost plus. We're not a sole community provider. Uh, we don't meet that designation. We're certainly not an academic medical center. Um, we're the only MDH hospital in this state. Um, and yes, we do get um, additional revenues for being that designation, but those revenues are in question for, as I mentioned in our presentation, um, are uh, to expire in um, September of 2022. So um, where, where I'm coming from is if your expectation is to see a, a three or 5% margin at, at BMH, we're not gonna really get there. And, and, and the, the challenge we have is um, our board has um, uh, focused on um, serving the, um, um, the vulnerable, most vulnerable populations in terms of a dental program, in terms of treating um, and working with the homeless shelter in our community, and what I've said in the past of maintaining uh, an obstetrical service here, our birthing center here, which you know, as I've shared with you, is a, a $4 million loss. So um, it's the commitment that the board here has, has made um, and has tasked us as the administration to ensure that those programs will continue because that is baked into our culture and baked into our mission. Um, so I just I just want to um, make sure, um, and I know I go through this every year, but I just want to make sure that um, uh, for the record, that's no, we're, I don't see us ever getting to um, the kind of margin that you might see in some of the other, uh, other hospitals. Um, thankfully, we have a substantial endowment at this hospital um, that can support um, those more difficult years, um, as long as the stock market obviously continues to grow. Um, and, you know, 75% of our expenses, expenses are related to staffing. And this is not the time to start looking at cutting staff. Um, we are, all the hospitals are having staffing challenges. We're seeing a little bit of an uptick in terms of using contract labor, which obviously is incredibly expensive. Um, and our focus right now is on retention of our existing staff through a very, very difficult year um, where we're focused on resiliency and helping our staff deal with the challenges that we've come through. Um, so, um, you know, as we talk and as you've talked about um, uh, in the past about reducing expenses, um, it's really a difficult thing for us uh, to reduce expenses because those th those reductions would have an impact on some of those uh, the programs that are core to us, our essential services to us um, and to our community. Uh, and we've got to find a way to continue to support that and what are those services. And that's one of our discussions. I think Kevin, you and I chatted about this that we need to have with you as the Green Mountain Care Board, how can you help us um, in ensuring that those programs that this community depends upon will exist for our community and the most vulnerable uh, uh, members of our community? Um, because that is core to this hospital. Um, so whether it's working with us and looking at uh, potentially an enhanced 
Medicaid payment for OB, things of that nature. And I think that's for our discussions as we go through sustainability planning. Um, that's what I would like to, to, to also put on the table um, because we got to work as a team. Um, we can't just cut expenses based upon what our board is saying. We've got to continue these services for our most vulnerable population in Brattleboro. So with that, I'm going to close. Um, and I do appreciate uh, the time you all have spent with us today. Uh, I appreciate the staff's uh, willingness to work with us and your openness as we go down this uh, road in the pandemic. So thank you, Kevin, and thank you uh, to the board. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate that. Um, members of the public, I'm now opening it up for public comment on Brattle Memorial. And I do see a hand raised, and it is Ham Davis and then Dale Hackett. Ham? Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, the, the, this is a very difficult question. It's the, uh, I, I, so I have sort of a comment and then a question. The, um, the, I, I think it's just totally impossible one of the things I think has happened here, and I think it's a huge factor for every one of the players in the whole healthcare space, is that there is no chance. I mean, zero. And this is something I know more about, really, than anybody else. Uh, there's no way that the pub to, to, to explain to the public what you're talking about. They're just not going to get it. You think if you think there is. Oh my God. Let me turn this off. Um, sorry about that. Um, the so my, so I it just the so what the reality it seems to me is that every single hospital in the, in this state every single hospital including UVM is going to get is going to put through every piece of they're going to take every patient that comes along and they're going to they're going to take care of them they're not going to turn any patients away so the so that so the question really is what is the value what is the uh, point of having an argument about what the net what what the actual volume is going to be in the future nobody really knows that i mean we we could keep as, as steve says we can keep going they can keep going and you can run and this trend that they're in now can run right out to say could say the end of the year near the second quarter um but nobody really knows that if the, if the delta variant turns out to be as nasty as the last one then you could return, which sort of, which is sort of what the board is assuming. You could return to the the trend, the uh, a trend driven by a, a a huge COVID factor. So my question is this: I think a one way to get at this, and I would ask. So this is a question, and I it's directed to Patrick Rooney. Okay, Patrick, could you say is it possible for you to say if there's two numbers on volume, your number and Steve's number? What's the difference in money between those two? Can you, is it possible to answer that question? I think you need to see that because, because otherwise it doesn't matter whether, it, it, nobody knows what the right answer is. Your guess is as good as, your board's guess is as good as Steve's guess. What's the difference in money if you just take the volume anticipated that's, 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 that's built into the, into the, uh, into Steve's estimate? And the volume, the, a differing volume that's built into the into the staff estimate, is that possible to do? I'm sure it's possible to do, but I don't believe we have all the information by which to do it. And I think it also proves out the points that have been made here today that it's unpredictable. And if your point is, why are we arguing about NPR? Uh, well, NPR is driven in part by volume, thereby. If we're arguing about the difference between volumes of their numbers versus what was submitted to us, then it's getting right back to that point about the instability that's occurring. So <clears throat> I think it would probably be a futile exercise to try to uh, push through that because nobody knows on either side of this relationship what is potentially going to happen. Right, but you if, can I ask another? Can I keep talking here? I'm not. A, I don't want to argue with Patrick. Is that can I say one more thing, Kevin? Go ahead, Ham. I, I, I understand that, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, it's if if there's any, if it makes any sense to even talk about volume, okay, 
then that that conversation has to have had some fallout in the area of money. Otherwise, why talk about it? If the so if you just take if you take Steve's budget, okay, Steve's budget would get him X amount of money. If he, if if you take the budget that he's that the board has just passed, that's going to give them Y amount of money, and. Right on the face of it, it would seem that somebody has got to have some idea of what that difference in money is. Two million dollars. Well, there you go. Okay, so who was that? Was that Steve? No, that was Maureen. Uh, okay, so okay, so right, so so okay, so we're now really talking about we're really talking about two million dollars. Okay. Now, does the two million dollars, um, the two, if the, if the, so to just to follow that out, um, if so, uh, if the, if the, if it turns out to be, uh, if the, if the, the volume turns out to be what it's going to turn out to be what it is, and if the difference is two million dollars, okay, then, um, then the, then the, does the, does that difference, is that delta? drive any kind of change in the pricing structure that is in place go during the first quarter? It will not, Ian. Not in the pricing structure in the first quarter. The first quarter is really last year's rate. You know, I think, I, I think the, the, the challenge is um, we, we we need to come up with a $2 million reduction in expenses to maintain the, the slim margin we, we projected. So that's what we need to do here at, at BMH. So that's the impact of the, redu uh, of the reduction in, in, uh, in the NPR. And we'll do our best to make sure that occurs. So that, that gets to the bottom line, if you will, of the results of this discussion. But, look, can but I just as, I, as I said, we, we're, we're committed to maintain all these programs that um, are focused in our community, whether it's uh, OB, whether it's uh, the dental program, things of that nature. So we've got to look at the, you know, uh, the non-labor programmatic um, um, opportunities, if you will, So, which we will. Just one final comment, and then I promise I'll stop, Kevin. The the question is, if, if Steve has to cut his, if, if he has to cut expenses, but he's forced to cut expenses by two million, by by an, an annualized whatever the is for the for the part of a year. If he has to do that, does that mean that he's going to not be able to take care of the patients that come in his door? Yes or no? I would say no. I, I totally agree with that. We will take care of every patient that comes in the door. We will we'll have to find other alternatives um, to uh, and not to reduce our services. I'm done, Kevin. Okay, thanks, Sam. Dale? That was an interesting conversation, and I'm just going to comment based on that conversation you're going to have to reduce your services if you don't have the workforce and i mean that more as just a no you're going to do everything you can not to but there are factors that are still going to reduce it that you don't have control over but you can do your best i want to compliment everybody on doing that your best the board the boards representing the hospitals um you're all doing everything you can to manage this, but it's really complicated and frustrating. Um, so mine is simply a comment of, I do get concerned as I watch these dynamics play out and it's such a volatile situation. I mean, $2 million to me, looking at these kind of dynamics, that's small change. It's not small change, but it is with the dynamics being what they are, depending on what my surge may be, I, I can get a extreme dip in 
volume and then a surge in volume if the capacity is there to deliver services needed, which it may not be. So I've got some real complicated factors here moving forward as far as what's really going to happen between Delta, Mu, if I said it right, and other variants that they don't even have a name for yet, but they know they're there. They just aren't sure what they're going to do. Um, I'm worried about what the kids are going to do. I still think you're going to see a surge with kids. Um, more than ever, I think you're going to see a surge with kids. So it's certain services that support the community. I don't want to see cut. And that, I think, it would be any consumer's concern. When you talk about a birthing center, somebody that's going to be a new parent, they want to know that they have a safe place to have a child. Um, if you need your blood drawn, I mean, I, I got this from what Dartmouth just went through. They had to close a, um, I'm going to call it a clinic that was drawing blood or a lab. Um, that was a workforce issue. It wasn't a cost issue. It was a workforce issue. Uh, and that put a squeeze on the one that was left that everybody was trying to get to to draw have their blood drawn half hour wait at the very least um these are all issues going forward they're all part of the picture so just a shout out i'm not sure shouts the right word either uh please keep in mind the effect on the community if you have to make cuts we have to keep the community supported. And I'm saying that to the Green Mountain Care Board and the hospitals. This is really complicated. I know it. But try to think beyond the numbers of the effect on the people and the qualitative effect. Um, I'm worried we're going to lose that because we just keep talking about the numbers. Hope I didn't take too long. Thank you for letting me comment. And good work, everyone. It's really complicated. Thank you, Dale. The nice thing about Vermont is we don't have any um, private hospitals. These are community-based hospitals with community-based leadership that are making decisions for their community. So I'm more optimistic than you are that uh, they're going to do the right thing. That's good to hear. Thanks. Is there any other member of the public who wishes to offer comment at this time? Is there any other member of the public who wishes to offer comment at this time? If not, um, is there a board member prepared to make a motion? Kevin, can I just ask for a very short recess to check in with legal because I I need to just go back and check on the motion that we used to originally approve the budget to make sure that anything in the discussion that we had today needs to be reflected. And how many minutes would you like us to be in recess for? Um, I, I would say if I... Probably 15 is fine if that works for Mike and Russ. I just wanted to hop on the phone with them to make sure I am 100% kosher. Okay, I'll place this meeting in recess until 11 o'clock, and then we will come back. See everybody at 11. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to do a quick roll call of the board to make sure we have everyone. Um, Member Holmes. Yes. Member Lunge. Yes. Member Pelham. Yes. And Member Usper. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to reconvene the uh, meeting of the board, and we're left um, at a, a point where um, a board member was about to make a motion on the request for reconsideration for. Brattleboro Memorial Hospital. And Robin, are you ready at this time? I am. Uh, thank you for the recess. Uh, I did meet with legal. We did review the transcript um, 
and the motion for approval of the initial budget, um, which allowed for flexibility in managing the operating expenses as we had provided for a number of other hospitals and also um, in the standard conditions allows for um, the flexibility related to the first quarter check-in. So I, I don't think um, that any of the discussion today related to those topics uh, require a change in uh, the initial motion. So with that, I would move to deny the re request for reconsideration um, from Brown Road Memorial Hospital. Is there a second? Second. Is there further board discussion? I just wanted to re reiterate thanks to to Steve and Andre for coming forward with their suggestions and look forward to hearing about how it's going. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. So Steve and Andre, we look forward to working uh, closely with you uh, and watching the next uh, few months and see how things progress. And um, at this time, Steve, is it uh, okay to say something publicly or not? Sure. So we received uh, news uh, that Steve is going to be retiring um, next spring and um, he's going to be missed. He's been the, the current chair for um, VAS for their board, um, in addition to everything that he's done for the Brattleboro community. And uh, it, it's exciting that uh, he's looking forward for the opportunity to spend more time with his uh, family, especially his grandchildren. And um, uh, just want to thank you, Steve, for your service to everyone in, in the area of Brattleboro. Thank you. I appreciate that, Kevin, and thank you for the relationships uh, we've developed and I personally have developed with you and members of the board over the last uh, many years. It's, it's been, as I said, in my resignation or my retirement um, uh, communication, it's been a privilege uh, to be a CEO at Brattleboro and to be a CEO in Vermont. Uh, I feel very lucky to end my healthcare career over 45 years uh, here in Vermont. So thank you. Thanks. Is there any old business to come before the board? Kevin, can I make a quick comment? This is Jeff. Sure, certainly, Jeff. Um, thank you. I just I just wanted to underline your appreciation for Steve Gordon. Um, Steve serves as the chair of Vaz, and and he does did so at a time when leadership was really really critical. And one thing that Steve did early and often was make sure that the hospitals had a voice at the table, a voice with Mike Smith, a voice with the governor. Um, a voice in all of the various surge planning efforts and PPE coordination responses and everything else we did. Steve made sure that we were at the table. Um, he's also been a leader on a workforce. And uh, to your point, Kevin, he'll be missed in Brattleboro, but really by the entire hospital community. So just a, a thank you to Steve and also on a personal note, someone who's been a mentor to me. So, um, so thank you, Steve, and thanks, Kevin, for your kind remarks. Thank you, Jeff. Is there any old business to come before the board? Is there any new business to come before the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day.